just on the ball. Hey everyone, it's Noe here and I'm so excited to share today's lesson here in a bit. It's going to be awesome. Today we're going to be learning that on God's team, players change the world. And so we're going to read a pretty cool passage about Jesus and his disciples. And so first I want to go over our main point. And our main point for today is on God's team, players change the world. So we got some motions to, to go along with that. So here we go. So on God's team, this is sign language for God, players change. So this is sign language for change, and then world. This is also sign language for world. So here we go. On God's team, uh, players change the world. Let's try it one more time. Here we go. On God's team, players change the world. Awesome job. This is it, Jeff. Your chance to be a hero. You catch the pass, you make the shot, you win. You catch the pass, you make the shot, you win. No, 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 no. I missed the shot. I had the chance. I was wide open. I, I missed it. I failed. I had my chance to be a hero and I blew it. Jeff? Don't look at me, Drew. I'm a failure. What? I missed the shot. I failed. What are you? All my life I wanted to be Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. The Broad James, but no, nobody, nobody, a big loser. But Jeff. No, just leave me, cut me from the team. Would you, Jeff? Tell the boys I'm sorry. Tell them I burned my own jersey in shame. But Jeff. No, I'm sorry, Drew, I failed. Jeff, you got the rebound. What? 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 The ball, you got it on the rebound. You get a second chance. I do? You do. I do! Dribble! Shoot! Yeah! Yeah! I did it! We won the game! We did it! How's it feel to get a second chance, buddy? Pretty awesome, dude! Come on, let's go celebrate! It is time for sports trivia, so here we go with question number one. What is the only sport to be played on the moon? Is it A, basketball, B, golf, C, football, or D, wrestling? The correct answer is B, golf. Question number two. What type of race is the Tour de France? A bike race, a NASCAR race, a motorcycle race, or a marathon? The correct answer is A, a bike race. Question number three. How long is a marathon? A, 50 miles. B, 25 miles. C, 26.2 miles. Or D, 28.8 miles. The correct answer is C, 26.2 miles. Here we go. Two more questions. Question number four. In what sport would you find a pommel horse? Is it A, horseback riding? B, horse racing, C, barrel racing, or D, gymnastics? The correct answer is D, gymnastics. And our final question, who has the record for the most NASCAR championships? Is it A, Richard Petty, B, Dale Earnhardt, C, Jimmy Johnson, or D, all of the above? The correct answer is all of the above. All right, it is time for our Bible drill. So everyone, grab your Bibles, keep them closed. All right, we're going to be today in the Old Testament. And so are you ready for this week's Bible drill verse? All right, let's go. Here we go. Today's Bible drill verse is Ecclesiastes 4.3.
Again, Ecclesiastes 4.3, so I'm going to look it up too, and let's see if y'all can beat Mr. Noe in looking up this week's um, uh, Bible drill Bible verse. So let's see. Ecclesiastes is actually in the Old Testament. It comes after Psalms and Proverbs. So I'm right here. I'm in Psalm. Now I'm in Proverbs. Um, there's Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 4, 9. Here's chapter 4 and verse 9. All right. So here we go. I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 4, 9. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. So over the past two weeks, we've talked about the importance of teamwork. During the first week, uh, Miss Sam shared how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood up together for what was right. They refused to bow down and worship the idol that King Nebuchadnezzar had made. They were thrown into the fire, and then they were rescued by God. And then last week, Mr. Troy talked about how Moses got some advice from his father-in-law and was able to get a team to help him solve the people's problems. And so today we're going to jump to the New Testament and we're going to be talking about how Jesus um, prepared his disciples to share all about him and all the incredible things that he had done. So let's jump into our passage today. We're going to be reading from Luke chapter 9 verses 1 to 6. So here's what it says. Jesus called together the 12 disciples. He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to heal sicknesses. Then he sent them to announce God's kingdom and to heal those who were sick. He told them, don't take anything for the journey. Do not take a walking stick or a bag. Do not take any bread, money, or extra clothes. When you're invited into a house, stay there until you leave town. Some people may not welcome you. If they don't, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet. This will be a witness against the people living there. So the twelve disciples left. They went from village to village. They announced the good news and healed people everywhere. So in this passage, we see that Jesus called together 12 of his best friends, the disciples, and they traveled with Jesus for three years. Um, they were learning from him, and they watched him perform many miracles. Jesus even gave the disciples power to heal people. And then Jesus told them in this passage, he told the disciples to go out and tell everyone how much he loves them and that he died for them and, he, and that he came back to life. The disciples knew that this was the very best thing that they could do with their lives. And Jesus told them not to worry about taking things with them. No clothes, no food, or money. Because wherever they went, um, they could ask something, or they could ask for something to eat or a place to stay. And God would provide that. Jesus also reminded um, them that many towns might not welcome them. And if they weren't welcome, the disciples didn't need to worry about it. They just needed to leave the town and to travel to another place, to continue sharing the good news. So the people traveled from village to village, the disciples traveled from village to village, telling others about Jesus and healing people everywhere, which is really awesome. And as they traveled, here's the awesome, or the more awesome thing, I guess. As they traveled, more and more people started believing in Jesus and following him too. Um, these people started telling more people that they knew, and then the church continued to grow and grow. And even today, we know that Jesus, um, we know about Jesus because people kept telling others about him. You know, even today, we know about Jesus because people continue to tell others. Um, Jesus needed people to share the amazing news that he died for everyone's sins and that we all can be forgiven. But one person alone couldn't do all this work. Jesus needed a team. And Jesus knew that there was power in numbers. We just read in our Bible drill verse from uh, Ecclesiastes that two people are better than one, um, that they can help each other in everything that they do. And so, um, and so Jesus knew um, that one person alone trying to share the gospel wasn't going to work. He needed a team. You know, it's, it's like, you know, me trying to stand on this cup. You know, if I, if I put this cup here on the ground and just stand on it, is it going to be able to hold my weight? Look at that. It just, it's all crushed up by itself. So you just saw that this one cup could not stand my weight all alone. But let's see what happens when we put a bunch of cups stacked on top of each other and line them up and see if they can withstand my weight. So here we go. Look at that. The, the, these cups right here, when one of them alone was there, it couldn't stand my weight. But when you put them all stacked up all together, more than one, Look what they can do. 
You know, on God's team, everybody has a special role to play. Just like the disciples told everyone about Jesus, you know, think about it. Those disciples started telling more and more and more people about Jesus. And we too can tell others about Jesus. Because of the disciples, thousands and thousands of people's lives were better because they started following Jesus. The disciples changed the world and on God's team, we can change the world too. So we just talked about that we all have a purpose. The Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And what that means is that God has made us unique. So let's celebrate right now God's creativity by celebrating our birthdays for this week. Well, thank you so much for helping us celebrate our birthdays this week. And thank you so much for joining us this week for our kids lesson. So before we end, I want to pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for today. And I thank you so much for all these families and all these children who are watching God. Lord, I pray that you would bless each and every single one of them. And Lord, thank you for reminding us about the power of, of being together and the power of, you know, not being alone, but doing life with others, God. And Lord, I pray that you would all help us to do that, Lord, because we see that when uh, two or more come together, God, we can do the impossible, just like we saw with those cups. Uh, one couldn't hold up my weight, but when we put a lot of them together, they could do the impossible. And so, Lord, help us to realize that, Lord, and help us to just um, continue to go after you, God, and may we share you with others. May we tell our friends, our family, just all about you and the amazing things that you've done, Lord, and the incredible sacrifice that you made by sending your one and only son, Jesus, to die or to come to this earth, live a perfect life, die on the cross, and be raised to life again. What an amazing gift that we can receive um, through you, God. And I thank you so much again, and I praise you so much for all these birthdays, Lord, and just pray that you would be with these families and all these children this week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a great week, everyone, and we will see you next week.